Um, and speaking about other, you know, cannabis solutions is, is Big Pharma. And Dr. Ethan Russo is here to talk on the three echelons of cannabis commerce, pharmaceutical development, standardized cannabis supplements, and artisanal production. Um, you know, Ethan, you talk about a peaceful coexistence. Can you explain that to us and, and what that would mean to us as a collective? First, by way of introduction, yes, I'm a neurologist, but I've been an organic farmer since 1974 when I was a grad student at UC Davis. Uh, additionally, uh, while I was in practice in Montana, I ran a thing called BAFO, uh, the Blackfoot Organic Fruit and Flower Operation, and sold uh, the most expensive organic vegetables you can imagine at the farmer's market in Missoula. But um, there are three echelons of uh, activity in terms of how cannabis is produced. The model that you probably will not be emulating is the pharmaceutical model. Um, in that, uh, I like to say that there are four pillars of true medicine. I've got a graphic here. I, by now, you've probably all read the 100-page PDF that I sent, but uh, anyway, this is just a little analog demonstration. Um, so the four pillars of a true medicine are efficacy, does it work, uh, safety, self-explanatory, standardization, that might require a little more explanation. Can you show absolute chemical uh, consistency over time? And this is a prerequisite of a pharmaceutical. And then the one that's often ignored is the fourth one called accessibility, and that's a combination. Is it available, number one, but number two, is it affordable? Because if it's not, if we're talking about biological medicine, the things they advertise on TV and they hope you're not listening when there are two paragraphs of rapid fire side effects that they describe, most of those medicines are in the 50 to 60K per year range in cost. Um, now, you're dealing at a much more reasonable level. So beyond the pharmaceutical model, which is generally a 10 to 12 year proposition and somewhere between 800 and 1 point million and 1.2 billion expenditure, um, it is the case that you can make um, a botanical medicine that's a pharmaceutical, approvable by the FDA. This has been done with Epidiolex, 98% pure CBD. Um, I would have been a lot happier if that had been an extract with uh, full flavor and capabilities of the medicine, but I don't work at that company anymore. Um, but um, you're not likely gonna be going for that. If anybody's interested in genuine pharmaceutical production, we can talk more later. Um, the second echelon of activity would be um, material that's still pretty standardized, but would say be sold on the supplement market. And so this could be any number of products that are derived from cannabis. Uh, probably not so much straight flour, but any kind of extraction, um, and it could be a topical, it could be oral, um, uh, could be some of the products that we've seen people bring today. Um, but this is an, a growth area. Um, clearly, a lot of you might know people um, uh, like Horizon Herbs and things like that. Uh, some of those people, especially in Southern Oregon, had big enough operations that they were able to put out their own tinctures commercially and this kind of thing. Um, this is, again, requires a lot of bureaucratic uh, rigmarole uh, to do properly, but um, it's below the pharmaceutical uh, effort. And finally is the third, the artisanal, um, for lack of a better term. Now, it's not the case that everyone has an expert herbalist um, in their neighborhood and can vouch for you know, this batch of material is really strong, so you want to be very careful with it, as opposed to um, it's good for this condition and not so much for that condition. Um, but um, for you uh, that have been doing this a long time, 
I'm sure you have good ideas about what you have and what it's good for, and that hopefully can also succeed uh, in the current difficult market. But you do have to distinguish yourselves in some way, and I'll be talking a lot more about how to do that later, particularly with regards to different components of cannabis on how what their therapeutic benefits are and how they can be leveraged uh, in a patient population. 